This anime can be considered as the pioneer of harem anime. After being reincarnated into another world, the male protagonist Tuya not only becomes a king but also marries nine wives. More surprisingly, in addition to these wives, he also encounters many girls who take the initiative to get close to him. Some will fall to the ground deliberately in front of him to let him see their private parts, while some have sexy bodies and will always force him to touch their bodies. But as we know, Tuya is a man of justice and won't have intimate interactions with them casually. Today let's see Tuya's happy life full of passion with his harem members in another world. The story begins with the male protagonist Tuya fighting with his fiancés. Their targets are the two mithril giants. The body of the mithril giants is so hard that ordinary weapons cannot do any damage to it. Tuya teleports the two mithril giants to a height of 10,000 meters through a portal. After they fall out of the air, Tuya and his fiancés take turns attacking. With everyone's joint efforts, they manage to defeat the two mithril giants. After returning home, Tuya is summoned by the god, who is accompanied by the goddess, and hurries to meet him using the portal. The gods want to inquire about Tuya's situation. Tuya is very satisfied with his current life and he is thankful that the gods have given him a second life. At the moment, he is not sure of his future goals, but he intends to earn money by completing tasks first. While talking about smartphones, the goddess notices that Tuya does not use photos of his four fiancés as wallpaper. She thinks it's very nice to set the favored one's photo as wallpaper and smile while while looking at the photo. But Tuya thinks differently than she does, and he doesn't like smiling like that, causing the goddess to doubt his attitude. She remembers Tuya laughing when he bought engagement rings for the four fiancés. Tuya doesn't expect that the goddess and god have been spying on his life, and he finds them very boring. Meanwhile, Tuya's fiancés are bathing together. They are all so obsessed with Tuya that they can't help but check out their engagement rings. Tuya is very powerful, and Yamina believes that he will have more fiancés in the future. They can't interfere with Tuya's decisions, and what they need to do now is try to strengthen themselves and support Tuya. The other fiancés also agree with Yamina's idea. After taking a bath, one of the fiancés Ye and Tuya arrive at the repair shop. Ye's sword broke during a battle with the mithril giants, and it will take a week to forge a new one. On the way back, Ye offers to hold hands with Tuya, to which Tuya agrees. Ye is very excited, and she hopes that she and Tuya can always be so happy. Later, Tuya and Yamina arrive at the palace together. Yamina is the eldest princess of the Belfast Kingdom and has a very high status. The queen is happy that they are able to be engaged, but she worries that announcing their marriage will cause trouble for Tuya. First, the nobles who choose Yamina as their daughter-in-law will see Tuya as an enemy. Second, there will be many people who want to woo Tuya. Third, if Tuya fails to perform well, some diehards will think he is not worthy of being Yamina's husband. After returning from the palace, Tuya thinks of the three problems raised by the queen. The first two are unavoidable, and what he can do is try to make real achievements and contribute to the country. So Tuya goes to a hotel to investigate the situation. Knowing that the hotel didn't earn much money, Tuya helps the owner transform the hotel and create a hot spring. After that, he gathers a group of people he knows to come to the hotel to experience it. His four fiancés are included. Yamina discovers that soaking in hot springs makes her skin smoother and wants Tuya to admire her skin. The other fiancés are shy and do not admit that the purpose of their hot spring baths is to make Tuya like them more. Yamina thinks they are not mature enough. If they really like Tuya, they will want to have an intimate interaction with him. She wonders if they really like Tuya. In order to convince Yamina of their feelings for Tuya, they tell their stories. When Els first met Tuya, she developed a crush on him. He was very gentle in every move and respected her. After they spent a long time together, she gradually fell in love with Tuya. Linza is Els' twin sister. She is not good at communicating with people, and every time she interacts with a boy, she will annoy the other party. But Tuya was patient and always listened to her carefully. When Tuya took her to meet with other girls, she felt heartbroken. That's when she realized she had a crush on him. Ye has a similar experience with them, and she admires Tuya's character. He is circumspect and very determined. He takes action more for others than for himself, often helping those around him. These are the reasons why they are attracted to him. After they tell their stories, Els asks Yamina to also tell why she likes Tuya. Yamina is very straightforward. As she says, she was sure that Tuya would be her husband when she first met him. She can't say a specific reason, but she just likes him. At this time, they hear the manager of the Sky Garden Francesca saying that she's going to rub Tuya's back. Right now Francesca and Tuya are bathing in different pools. Because the two pools are separated by a fence, she wants to climb directly over it and go to Tuya. Unexpectedly, Tuya set up a paralysis device on the fence to prevent someone from peeping at the women's bathhouse. After being paralyzed, Francesca is unable to move forward. Just as Tuya is enjoying the pleasure of bathing, Lean suddenly rushes into the men's bathhouse, informing Tuya that she has found the ruin of Babylon Island. 
Lean is the leader of the fairy tribe and a master of using magic. She is interested in lost ancient technology and knowledge, and wants to open a portal to reach ancient ruins that she has not been to. While they use a monitoring device to find the location of the ruins, they find a giant crystal monster. Phrase is about to attack a group of desert victims. Tuya immediately rushes to the desert with his harem members. The elves' sisters are responsible for bringing the victims to safety. Because Ye is very powerful, Tuya uses a portal to send her to duel with Phrase. Since Phrase's body is very hard, Ye's attack does not hurt him. She fails in her attack and returns to Tuya. While Tuya is thinking about a battle plan, his friend Endi appears. He doesn't expect to see Tuya here, and greets him immediately. He then teleports to Phrase and smashes it directly with magic. Tuya praises Endi's strength and asks him about the origin of Phrase. According to Endi, this world has a barrier that prevents the invasion of foreign objects. But one day, the barrier has a crack and Phrase emerged from it. Endi thinks that Phrase is just an underling who does what he is told. The purpose of the culprit is the same as his, which is to find the sleeping king, which Tuya feels confused about. But Endi does not explain it and immediately says goodbye to him. After Endi's departure, Tuya provides water to the victims. Among those victims are three adventurers. Except for them, everyone wears a collar, which is the symbol of the slaves and represents that they cannot disobey the orders of their masters. If the collar is forcibly removed, they will suffer severe pain and even death. Because their owner is dead, they have no way to remove the collar. The three adventurers are very sympathetic to them, and intend to help them escape abroad and find a way to remove the collar. Tuya sympathizes with them as well. Using the magic of instant fetching, he removes the collars. Even so, their identity as a slave cannot be changed and they cannot return to their original countries. Yamina, as the first princess, invites them to join the kingdom of Belfast. The victims are so grateful to her that they kneel down to thank her. Tuya sends the victims home and tells Francesca to settle them. Before heading to the ruins of Babylon Island, Lean asks Tuya to explain his relationship with Endi. Tuya replies that he met Endi on his way to buy an engagement ring. At that time, Endi wanted to pay with a strange coin, but the merchant refused. After Tuya paid his bill, he got the strange coin. Knowing that Endi wanted to find a job, he took him to the Adventurer's Guild. To convince them, Tuya shows the coin. Francesca is a heritage of Babylon and knows much about ancient civilizations. She recognizes the coin as the Parthino Silver Coin, a currency from 5,000 years ago. Lean thinks Endi is very suspicious. Not only does he carry ancient coins with him, but he can easily defeat crystal monsters. Els hears Lean mention the crystal monster and takes the opportunity to ask Tuya why he knows that the beast's name is Phrase. Tuya tells them that he received a message from Regina. Regina created nine floating islands in Babylon, and the Sky Garden is one of them. She lived 5,000 years ago and was a genius female scientist of ancient civilizations. Regina had a tool to foresee the future and watch them every day. Until one day, the Phrases destroyed Parthino, where Regina was located. Perhaps, as Endy said, Phrase appeared because of the cracks in the world barrier. Tuya doesn't know much, and he hopes Francesca will tell him a more detailed story, such as whether humans were at war with Phrase 5,000 years ago. Francesca's answer surprises him greatly. Although it was a tough fight, humans and phrases did not officially engage in a battle. Regina developed a weapon against phrases, a single piloted giant mobile robot called Frame Gear. Unexpectedly, by the time the weapon was made, phrases had disappeared. Later, these weapons were stored in one of the ruins of Babylon, a vehicle hangar. If Tuya can find it, he can get those weapons. So Tuya again leads his harem members to search for the ruins. Using wind magic, Lean discovers one of the ruins beneath the desert. Tuya is the first to enter the ruins and finds the teleportation array inside. Because magic is not available inside the ruins, Tuya asks the summoned beast Kahaku to inform the others of his situation. Then he comes to another floating island of Babylon through the teleportation array. Unfortunately, this is not a vehicle hangar, but a workshop. Rosetta, the manager of the workshop, is very perverted. Although Tuya is the compatible person, Person. She still asks him to take a test, which requires Tuya to stand in place and guess the color of Rosetta's underclothes. By casting magic, Tuya speaks out the correct answer. Because Rosetta is dressed too sexy, he is very shy. Rosetta recognizes Tuya as the compatible person and announces him as the owner of the workshop. She records his DNA with a kiss and takes him on a tour of the workshop. The workshop is advanced in technology. Both Tuya and Rosetta have access to create any tool on a tiny cube. If they have the original object, they can also replicate it directly. Tuya uses his usual automatic pistol and a piece of mithril to create the mithril pistol. He loves the workshop very much. The only thing that disappoints him is that although the frame gear was made in the workshop, the finished products were all put into the vehicle hangar, and he can never get it. After visiting the workshop, Tuya uses a portal to bring his harem members here, including Francesca. Since Tuya is now the the owner of the Sky Garden and the workshop, he decides to merge them into one. 
Back in the Belfast Kingdom, Tuya creates jobs for the desert victims. He makes many bicycles in his workshop and sells them to traders at high prices. After securing initial funding, he opens a cafe and hires the victims. As the owner of the cafe, Tuya is popular with many people, such as Prem, the reception lady of the Adventurers Guild. On this day, Tuya and Yamina come to the guild and accept the commission to fight the bloody crabs. While they are talking to Prem, she asks Tuya to order an available book series, The Order of the Rose. Tuya readily agrees. After leaving the guild, Yamina tells him something. Recently, works about homoerotic relationships in the reading cafe have been very popular. The books that Prim mentions also talk about this theme. The author of the book is Raleel, the first princess of the Refries Imperium. Because Yamina has a very good relationship with her, she knows that Raleel loves stories about homoerotic relationships, and that she created The Order of the Rose under a pseudonym. Unable to understand Raleel's preferences, Tuya decides to go on a fight against the bloody crabs first. He and Yamina work together and defeat the bloody crabs easily. While going to the guild to report the result, Tuya tells Prim that he is going to order the books and asks her to pick popular works of the same theme. Prim is very excited. She immediately goes to communicate with the other reception ladies and makes a long list of books. Tuya comes to the bookstore with a book list to stock up. Interestingly, he meets Raleel here. Raleel intends to buy a very popular novel about homoerotic relationships, but the book she wants has been bought by Tuya. When she discovers that Tuya has purchased The Order of the Rose, she decides to use a signed book to exchange the book she wants with him. As she reveals that she is the author of The Order of the Rose, Tuya realizes that she is Raleel, whom Yamina mentioned, and calls out her name. Raleel is even more shocked than Tuya. Her authorship has been well hidden, and she doesn't understand why Tuya would know the truth. Tuya explains that he is Yamina's fiancé and that he knows it from her. Because Tuya buys a lot of novels about homoerotic relationships, Raleel misunderstands that he likes boys, and she is very suspicious of his real relationship with Yamina. To convince Yamina that he likes girls, he arranges for her to meet Yamina. He also goes to the workshop and copies the book that Raleel wants. After coming into contact with Tuya, Raleel has a lot of inspiration. She then writes a novel featuring Tuya. In this novel, Tuya does a lot of evil things to knights, princesses and princes in order to seize a certain country. When Tuya sees the novel, he feels very angry. Afterward, Tuya continues stocking books. On this day, he comes to the Regulus Empire to buy books. There is a military coup in the empire, and it becomes very chaotic. Tuya meets a wounded young man on the street and hurries to heal his wounds with magic. To stop the civil war, Tuya rushes to the palace. He uses his smartphone to look for people in need and discovers the third princess, Lucia. He takes down the soldiers who attack Lucia and heals her wounds. Lucia rarely has contact with men, and she feels very nervous when communicating with Tuya. At this time, a female knight of the Imperial Knights rushes over. Knowing that Tuya has mastered teleportation magic, she asks him to teleport the royals to safety. Tuya grants her request. Led by the female knight, they come to the king's bedchamber. The king was knocked unconscious by the rebel's leader, Bazar, and his condition is not well. Bazar is a general of the Regulus Kingdom. A few days ago, he had a disagreement with the king. He wanted to attack the Kingdom of Belfast, but the king refused. Bazar is a very ambitious man. He has been preparing for 20 years to occupy the Kingdom of Belfast. He used criminals as sacrifices and made a contract with demons. All those who try to stop him are his enemies. Because Tuya has been helping the Regulus royal family, Bazar is very upset with him. Not only does he summon demons, but he also uses artifacts to absorb the mana of Tuya. In addition to this, he also has an artifact used for defense, and physical attacks will not have any effect on him. Realizing that he will have a hard time defeating Bazar, Tuya decides to leave first with Lucia and her father as well as the female knight. Although he is temporarily unable to defeat Bazar, he casts magic to cause some trouble for Bazar before leaving. Tuya takes them home and heals them. He then informs his fiancés of the civil war in the Regulus Kingdom. Considering that Bazar is about to attack the Kingdom of Belfast, they have to find a way to deal with Bazar. So he reports about Bazar to the King of Belfast. The King devises a plan for repression and entrusts Tuya with his help. Tuya accepts the King's commission. When he returns home again, the King of the Regulus royal family has woken up and thanks him. Tuya tells him not to worry, as they have already figured out a strategy against Bazar. Lucia asks Tuya to find her brother before the war. Tuya asks Lucia to imagine her brother's appearance in her mind. At the same time, he casts magic and reads her memory. But he never expects that Lucia's brother is the young man he saved. He he uses his phone to find the location of Lucia's brother and finds that he is settled in a very safe place. 
After dawn, Tuya infiltrates the kingdom of Regulus with his fiancés. Since magic is ineffective against Bazar and demons, he devises two very elaborate plans. In plan 1, he casts magic on the mithril sword and uses the sword to slash at the demons. In plan 2, he casts teleportation magic to send Bazar to a storage space. There are several slimes in the storage space, which continue to cause a terrible smell. After entering the space, Bazar falls unconscious because of it. With the help of Tuya, the civil war in the kingdom of Regulus is resolved resolved and the king regains control of the country. To thank Tuya, the king decides to marry Lucia to him. Yamina is very generous. She has long seen through that Lucia likes Tuya. Therefore, she asked the other fiancés in advance for their opinions and found that they all support Tuya's marriage to Lucia. Lucia becomes Tuya's fifth fiancé as she wishes, and she feels very happy. The kings of the kingdoms of Belfast and Regulus decide to give a portion of their respective lands to Tuya in order to reward him. In other words, Tuya will become the king of this territory. Tuya accepts their kindness and names his kingdom Brunhilde. Next, he's going to plan urbanization. When Tuya and his fiancés are discussing the design of the castle, Rosetta introduces another function of the workshop to them. In addition to copying, the workshop also has a function of automatic transformation. As long as the materials are prepared, the transformation can be completed in three days. As any material has to be broken down and reconstructed, it doesn't matter if they use old materials. In order to save materials, Lucia proposes to use materials from abandoned castles. The idea is recognized by all. Through their joint efforts, the castle is quickly built. After the establishment of the Kingdom of Brunhilde, the King of the Refries Imperium applies to Tuya for the establishment of diplomatic relations. He also suggests that Tuya host a reception to entertain the kings of the West. Tuya accepts his offer. He calls in the waiters of the cafe to help, and also prepares various entertainment facilities. While he is thinking about security, a visitor offers him help. The visitor's name is Tsubaki, and she is a female ninja who is a former member of the Takeda's elite for led by Kusaka. Kusaka, anticipating Takeda's imminent destruction, fired her early. Because Tuya saved her and her people, Tsubaki takes her entire clan to join him. With the permission of Tuya, they become the first residents of the Kingdom of Brunhilde. It is worth mentioning that Kusaka becomes the Prime Minister of Tuya with his outstanding ability. Tuya, taking into account the need for some commercial activity of the residents, decides to recruit merchants. He not only creates the street with his workshop, but also builds an entrance post with Tsubaki's clan people. Lucia notices that Tuya is very busy working and specially prepares a bento box for him. Tuya is impressed by her and thinks she is a very cute girl. As the reception begins, the entertainment facilities prepared by Tuya are popular among many kings. It is the first time that the kings of the countries have the opportunity to get together, and each of them has a great time. The final performance of the reception is fireworks. While enjoying the fireworks, Lucia thanks Tuya. Since meeting him, she has had a great time every day. Tuya takes the opportunity to give the engagement ring to Lucia and hold her hand. After the reception, Tuya and his harem members once again embark on a journey to find the ruins of Babylon. Fortunately, they find a relic in the kingdom of Elfrau. As last time, Tuya enters the ruins first, and then finds the alchemy lab, whose administrator is named Flora. Since Tuya already has a garden and workshop, Flora recognizes him as the compatible person, but she still asks Tuya to complete a test involving touching her body. Tuya doesn't expect Flora to be as perverted as Rosetta, and he feels very nervous. After the test, Flora announces that Tuya has become the owner of the alchemy lab and records his DNA with a kiss. Immediately afterwards, Flora takes Tuya to visit the alchemy lab, which is a facility used to combine different substances and magic to produce new items, such as a potion that can treat wounds and so on. It also functions as a medical facility, and it's possible to regrow an arm or a leg. This will be very good news for the residents of Brunhilde. After dealing with these things, Tuya intends to concentrate on taking care of the people around him. He goes to Ye and the twins' homes in sequence to ask their families for the permission for their marriage. Ye's parents respect her opinion very much and does not object. When the twins' uncle learns that Tuya is the king of Brunhilde, his first reaction is to kneel to him. Tuya is popular in the twins' homes. Later, when Tuya learns that thunder bears have appeared in the twins' hometown, he helps eliminate them. While waiting for the Adventurer's Guild to deal with the Thunder Bears, Tuya meets Endy. He is very curious about phrases and hopes that Endy will erase his confusion. Endy can't tell him the ins and outs of what happened, only telling part of the truth. The phrases don't belong to this world, and they came to this world to find the core of the king who led them. This core is hidden in the body of a random human and emits a unique faint sound. As the sound is covered by the heartbeat of the host, they can't hear the sound and can only make the heartbeat disappear by killing. That's why the army of phrases attacked humanity 5000 
thousand years ago, but for some reason, the barrier of the world is repaired, and phrases couldn't enter the human world again. At that time, Endy's task was to eliminate the remaining phrases. Unexpectedly, five thousand years later, cracks occur again. Endy has been busy destroying phrases lately in order to stall for time and wait for the king's core to move to another world. That's all Endy is able to tell to Tuya. Before Endy leaves, Tuya asks him what his identity is. Endy replies that he is a traveler. Tuya worries that the phrases will attack his kingdom. In order to confront phrase, he consults Rosetta about frame gear. Rosetta tells Tuya that the materials required to make the frame gear are huge and complex, and they can only make one per day. In addition, there are not many frame gears in the vehicle hangar, with only four or six of each type. Tuya believes that the most important thing now is to find materials and the vehicle hangar. He summons the flame monarch and makes a contract with it. Tuya names it Kugyoku and asks it to help gather intelligence. Kugyoku summons thousands of birds directly and sends them to find the ruins of Babylon. A few days later, Kugyoku reports to Tuya that a bird has spotted a suspicious building on an uninhabited island. Based on its description of the building, Tuya speculates that it is likely to be the ruins of Babylon. He is very excited and immediately comes to the uninhabited island with his harem members. They encounter several monsters on the island. His harem members cooperate with each other and easily defeat them. At this time, Paula, the summoned beast of Tuya, discovers the suspicious building. Led by it, Tuya comes to the building and confirms that this is the ruins of Babylon. He enters the ruins and meets the administrator, Monica. Monica has a very hot temper. She asks Tuya to defeat her before she recognizes him to be a compatible person. But her combat power is weak and she cannot cause any damage to Tuya. In the end, Monica has to announce that Tuya is the owner of the Hangar Island. When Tuya learns that this is the Hangar Island, he becomes very excited. At his request, Monica shows him a frame gear. Unfortunately, the frame gear here does not have fuel. If they want to get fuel, they have to go to another ruin, the Research Lab Island. See Tuya very sad, Monica suggests that he ask Flora. So Tuya comes to the alchemy lab with the harem group. Flora says she can make fuel, but its quality can't compare with the fuel made at the research lab island. Tuya doesn't care about the quality and just wants to get the frame gear activated now. After receiving Tuya's assurance, Flora asks him for the spell stones required to make fuel. Tuya, at Flora's request, uses his smartphone to find the spell stones. Lucky enough, there is a big one in Brunhilde. When Tuya finds it, he immediately gives it to Flora. While Flora is making fuel, Tuya comes to the hangar island to check on the frame gear. Coincidentally, Rosetta is in the company of Monica to check the condition of the hangar island. After meeting Tuya, Rosetta invites him to the pilot's seat. When he gets on the seat, he is increasingly looking forward to the day when the fuel is made. To get Tuya used to frame gear in advance, Monica takes out the two virtual reality machines she has made. She and Tuya sit on it and conducts actual combat training. Because it takes a month to make fuel, Tuya replicates many virtual reality machines in the workshop for the harem members and the residents of the city to experience. In addition, the workshop also produces frame gears every day. It only takes a few months for every resident to own a frame gear. Before the fuel is finished, Sushi suddenly arrives in the kingdom of Brunhilde. Sushi is Yamina's cousin, and she is also very close to Tuya. But when Sushi offers to marry him, Tuya is taken aback by her. At this time, Lane, the housekeeper of Sushi's home, arrives to explain the situation. Zabyun, the first prince of the kingdom of Linia, falls in love with Sushi at first sight at a banquet and proposes to her. Zabyun is 30 years old and is promiscuous. Lane is also opposed to the marriage. Sushi confesses to Tuya in order to convince him to marry her. She loves Tuya and just wants to marry him. Tuya feels very excited, but this is a matter between the three countries, and he must first consult with his fiancés. Unexpectedly, the fiancés are all very supportive of their marriage and are actively helping to find a solution. After the discussion, Tuya decides to have a conversation with Sushi's father, Duke Courtlined. He arrives at Sushi's house and tells the Duke that he will marry Sushi. The Duke thinks it is a good way to reject Zabyun. When Zabyun's brother Cloud comes to visit, the Duke refuses their marriage proposal on the grounds that Sushi and Tuya have an engagement. Unexpectedly, Cloud adores Tuya. Knowing that Tuya is good at teleporting magic, Cloud begs him to save his mother. It turns out that Cloud's mother is imprisoned by Prime Minister Wardak for nearly a decade. The Kingdom of Linia is currently in Wardak's control. Neither Cloud nor his father can resist him. Wardak's and Zabyun's mothers are cousins and are very close. Wardak intends to announce the succession of Zabyun while the marriage is announced. The Duke is very dissatisfied with Wardak's actions. He believes that an emergency meeting should be convened immediately to abolish Zabyun and help Cloud take the throne. As the emergency meeting begins, the kings of the Western Kingdoms express their support for Cloud, but they do not want to get involved in this political struggle and leave the task of helping Cloud to Tuya. 
So Tuya comes to the kingdom with Cloud, accompanied by Ye and Els. In order not to attract the attention of others, they all use invisibility magic, except for Cloud, who then heads to report the result of the marriage proposal to Zibyun and is followed by them. Zibyun is not much different from rumors. He has a hot temper and is accompanied by a female slave. Knowing that Sashi and Tuya are engaged, Zibyun intends to send people to spread rumors that Tuya is lecherous, and use these rumors to get Sashi to break the marriage contract with him. During this time, he can tell that Cloud is very opposed to his decision and beats him up. After that, Tuya's group goes to Cloud's residence and casts magic to heal Cloud. Tuya cares about the slave girl by Zibyun's side and uses the portal to rescue her. Even the collar around her neck is removed by him. Unexpectedly, Zibyun and Wardak are both very violent. After discovering that the slave girl is missing, they try to directly execute her by crushing the collar. Tuya's group follows them using invisibility magic and overhears Wardak's intention to use Cloud to declare war on the kingdom of Palifu. To help Cloud, Tuya makes a series of plans. The first operation is to rescue Cloud's mother. After dark, Tuya's group sneaks into the vicinity of where Cloud's mother is imprisoned. Tuya uses paralyzing magic to immobilize the guarding soldiers. They then easily rescue Cloud's mother and leave through the portal. The second operation is to gather evidence of Wardak's crimes. After rescuing Cloud's mother, Tuya uses invisibility magic and sneaks into Wardak's office alone in an attempt to record the evidence. But he never expects that he will find out about the adultery between Wardak and Zibyun's mother. They are discussing how to assassinate the king, get rid of all royal members, and make Zibyun the new king. And the reason why they are planning this is that Zibyun's biological father is not the king, but Wardak. Tuya records what they say with his phone. Having obtained the key evidence, Tuya intends to hand it over to the king. The king is very angry and immediately announces that he will pass the throne to Cloud. When questioned by Wardak, the king asks Tuya to play the video. He orders to remove Wardak from his post and sentences Zibyun to death. Upon his accession to the throne, Cloud sells the Zibyun family to slave trade to let them experience the life of a slave. Things in the kingdom of Linnea come to an end, and Sashi once again confesses to Tuya. Unable to turn her down, Tuya agrees to make her his sixth fiancé, but he still adheres to his principles, insisting that he will not marry them until he is 18. Next, let's have a look at Tuya's private life. He decides to deepen his relationship with his five fiancés. Because he hasn't given Sushi the engagement ring yet, they don't call Sushi, and the six of them go to the referee's imperium for a date. During then, a poster of a theatrical performance catches their attention. Just as they are about to go to the show, a group of gangsters stop them and demand money. Due to their weak combat power, Tuya's fiancés easily defeat them. Tuya has a very enjoyable day with his fiancés. In the evening, Sushi suddenly appears in front of them. She complains that they go out on a date without telling her. To compensate her, Tuya allows her to date him alone. Sushi decides to date in the kingdom of Brunhilde. On the day of the date, they wander around the kingdom and attract the attention of many residents. Sushi thinks Tuya is a good king, and his people all seem very happy. Towards the end of the date, Flora tells Tuya that the fuel is made. Tuya immediately fills the frame gear with the fuel for a test drive with his fiancés. Frame gear is easier to manipulate than expected. Even if they don't have mana, they can handle it very well. After the test drive, Tuya comes to the workshop. Rosetta uses fragments of phrases collected by Tuya to craft swords and crystal bullets. She also reports to Tuya about the problem she encountered when making frame gear. That is, a material called orichalcum is running out and it needs to be replenished as soon as possible. While searching for the Orichalcum Golem, Tuya passes by a kingdom called Lestia. He discovers that a group of low-level phrases are attacking the town and immediately helps the local knights take them down. Because many of the inhabitants are injured, Tuya heals them with magic. The leader of the knights is Hildegard, the first princess of Lestia. Hildegard is very grateful to Tuya for helping them. She once heard stories of Tuya helping countries solve problems and admires him. Unexpectedly, Tuya is not only smart, but also very skilled in swordsmanship. He can take down phrases with with just one blow. Tuya thinks Hildegard is also very good at swordsmanship, but she doesn't have a weapon that can deal with phrases. With her permission, Tuya takes the phrase fragments from the scene and gives her several crystal swords. After leaving the kingdom of Lestia, Tuya finds an Orichalcum golem and takes it down. On the way back, he meets a wounded girl. Although he casts magic to heal her, she falls into a coma. Tuya takes her to the alchemy lab for treatment. Unfortunately, the girl wakes up and loses her previous memories. As she doesn't have a name, Tuya gives her a temporary name, Sakura. When she is recovered, Tuya arranges a room for her in the castle and has Kagyoku as her guard. On this day, Tuya hears Sakura singing in the garden, and her singing makes Tuya heart race. Remembering that he hasn't played the piano for a long time, Tuya decides to accompany her on the piano. When Tuya's fiancés hear it, they love their music. 
After the performance, Tuya meets Prim in the Adventurer's Guild. Prim wants Tuya to accept the mission of fighting the Catablipas, which is very difficult to deal with. It spits out poisonous smoke from its mouth that will make plants wither, and its eyes are very terrifying. Whoever has eye contact with it will be turned into a stone. There are currently three teams who have been turned into stones. A total of 13 adventurers. If Tuya completes this commission, he will get a high reward, which attracts Tuya, and he accepts the mission. Before the mission, Tuya prepares weapons for his fiancés and adds recovery magic to their rings. Even they meet the sight of the Catablipas, they don't need to be worried. After the battle begins, Tuya uses his sword to cut down the Catablipas. Since he has eye contact with the Catablipas, his feet are petrified. He soon casts recovery magic, but his shoes are damaged. Tuya comes to the conclusion that recovery magic can only restore the body. At the same time, Lucia accidentally meets the sight of the Catablipas. To everyone's surprise, its eyes still take effect even after its death, and Lucia's body is petrified. Her petrified area is relatively large. After she casts recovery magic, her skirt is torn. Lucia is extremely shy and hurriedly asks Tuya to turn around. After that, Tuya finds another Catablipas. To avoid being petrified, he blocks its sight with magic. In the end, he successfully completes the mission. A few days later, Tuya invites the king of the allied kingdoms to experience the virtual reality machines and lends them to the kings. Phrases are very powerful. It is not enough to use only the power of Brunhilde to defeat them, and he wants people all over the world to learn to drive the frame gear. While Tuya is busy preparing for the fight against Phrases, the goddess suddenly arrives in the kingdom of Brunhilde. She falsely claims to be Tuya's sister and has a conversation with him alone. She is interested in Tuya's private life and wants to see him up close. At this time, a maid reports to Tuya that Lestia's messenger has arrived in Brunhilde an hour ago, and that they are currently visiting the Order. Tuya arrives at the Order's training ground and meets Hildegard and her grandfather, who come for the frame gear. Tuya takes them to a clearing on the outskirts to demonstrate the combat power of frame gear. As they are worried that Tuya will use frame gear to invade other countries, Tuya tells them the fact that Phrases once destroyed the ancient civilization. In order not to let the tragedy be repeated, he activates the frame gear. He never wants to invade other countries. If the allied kingdoms want to fight against beasts or help with disaster relief, he can lend the frame gear to them. Hildegard's grandfather is interested in frame gear. He wants to establish diplomatic relations with Brunhilde, but he cannot make this decision himself and has to go back and consult with his son. After visiting Frame Gear, Hildegard wants to compete with Brunhilde's strongest swordsman. Tuya believes that the strongest swordsman is Ye and arranges a match for them. Although the winner hasn't been decided in this competition, Hildegard admires Ye very much. To her surprise, Ye turns out not to be a knight, but one of Tuya's fiancés. Hildegard develops a crush on Tuya when she first met him. Knowing that Tuya already has six fiancés, she feels very devastated. The goddess and other fiancés are watching the battle offstage. The goddess sees through Hildegard's thoughts and reveals her affection for Tuya on the spot. Hildegard is shy and hurriedly apologizes to Ye. Unexpectedly, Ye not only does not blame her, but also invites her to be Tuya's seventh fiancé. The other fiancés are also very supportive of this. Hildegard is very touched, and she is determined to marry Tuya. The only person who objects this is Hildegard's grandfather. According to their national tradition, if Hildegard wants to get married, she must show her determination. So they have another competition. Hildegard's grandfather masters powerful skills, causing Hildegard to have a hard time resisting. To help her, Tuya deliberately uses his phone to show her grandfather a picture of a beautiful girl. Hildegard's grandfather is lecherous. He is attracted by the photo and shows flaws. Hildegard takes the opportunity to defeat her grandfather. Afterward, Tuya discovers two ruins of Babylon, the Rampart and Tower Islands at the same time. 347 years ago, the two islands made contact by chance. So now the Rampart and the Tower are at the same place. Tuya meets the administrator of the Rampart. Her name is Leora and she is very gentle. Knowing that Tuya already possesses several ruins, she does not test Tuya and directly declares him the owner of the Rampart. She then takes Tuya to meet Noel, the Tower's administrator, who is sleeping leaning against the tree. Leora asks Tuya to bring some food and wakes her up with the aroma of food. Noel has a very simple request. As long as Tuya is able to provide food and accommodation. She will admit that he is the compatible person. Tuya agrees to Noel's conditions. After the negotiations, Noel and Leora kiss Tuya in turn, recording his DNA. Since Noel is very lazy, Leora helps introduce the tower. The tower is the center of Babylon, able to draw magic particles from the air inside, amplify it, and transform it into magical energy. The rampart is the central pillar of Babylon's defense system, blocking physical and magical attacks. 
Toya believes that the tower can help in the creation of frame gear, and is also looking forward to the defensive performance of the rampart. While Toya is leading his harem members to tour the ruins, Kahaku delivers a letter, which is sent by the king of Belfast. He informs Toya that Yamina's mother is about to give birth. When Tuya receives the news, he immediately comes to Belfast with his harem members. The king is very excited. He brings his newborn baby to meet Tuya and asks him to give the baby a name. After thinking about it, Tuya names him Yamato. Yamato's birth is very good news for Belfast and Brunhilde. After the visit, Tuya's fiancés come to the women's bath together. They talk a lot about newborns and can't help but start thinking about their babies with Tuya. Several administrators of the ruins reveal to Tuya what his harem members talked about. They also tell Tuya that they foresee his future using the clairvoyance gem. He will have nine wives in the future, each of whom will give birth to a child. At the end of the story, Brunhilde hosts a banquet to celebrate the birth of Prince Yamato. Although Tuya has no children now, he feels very happy to have many family members and people. While he kisses his fiancée, Francesca brings out the clairvoyance gem to foresee his future. According to it, Tuya's other two wives will be Lean and Sakura. They will form a very happy family. That brings the end of this season. Tuya lives a very happy life with his harem. He not only has nine wives but also wins the favor of every administrator of the ruins. Coupled with the various maids in the castle, I think Tuya will have a hard time deciding whom to sleep with every day. Of course, such a happy life only exists in manga and novels. If you want to have such a happy life, you can only sleep early and have a nice dream. Or you can give this video a like. If this video can have more than 10,000 likes, I believe your dreams will definitely come true. Well, today's video ends here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, see you next time.